Today's liturgy and sermon are part of a series of worship services for the season of Epiphany 2022, developed by the Stewardship Division of the United Church of Canada. We are grateful to the writers for their work and willingness to share with the whole of the church. This recording is made and used with permission. We can learn a lot about the possession of land and riches from indigenous communities. Every nation has their own creation story that points to the connection between human life and land. People are woven into creation along with the land and its resources. Indigenous teachings speak in many different ways about how Mother Earth is there to provide us with everything we need. She gives us our clothing, shelter, medicine, food, beauty, water. She sustains us and we sustain her. Our creation story in Genesis tells us that God has created an interconnected world in which everything works together for the benefit of everyone, right down to the food we eat. We can see this interconnectedness in Corinthians, which tells us that we are all part of the same body, that the body functions best when it is working together. Each of our bodies has a story to tell, stories of babies and marathons, age and love, work and rest. We use our bodies in different ways. Some of us have parts that work better than others. Some of us have parts that we use in different ways. Some of us, some of us use our fingers to read or our hands to speak. Each of our bodies are unique, but none is better than any other. They're different, but not superior. Unfortunately, this is not how history or our present day has always seen bodies. We are supposed to be treating our bodies and, other, and the bodies of others as parts of God's creation, beautiful, unique, and sacred, something that we should care for just as much with just as much love as we offer the land and the water. Sadly, often our society treats our bodies with the same disregard that are as often shown to our land and our water resources. Sometimes, despite the fact that there is more than enough of what we need for everyone, we still live in a world with marked disparity between the rich and the poor. We still live in a world where people have power and other people do not, and we know that this system is failing us. All too often, our bodies are seen as nothing more than capital, used to make money for a system that places more value on some people than on others, and where our worth is measured by our ability to be financially productive. But this is not what God commanded of us. In today's reading, the year of the Lord's favor from Luke 4.19 most likely refers to the year of Jubilee, which is described in Leviticus 25, every 50 years, every 50 years, the Israelites are to release their indentured servants. Creditors are to return properties to their rightful owners. Outstanding debts are to be forgiven. The Jubilee ensures that the poor are cared for and that the hoarding of land and wealth is made incredibly difficult. In this passage, God also makes it very clear that the land shall not be sold in perpetuity. For the land is mine, with me you are but aliens and tenants. Throughout the land that you hold, you shall provide for the redemption of the land. 
God commands us to share our resources, to ensure that there is economic justice, to make sure that inequities are eliminated. We know as a church that we have not always lived out that commandment. We have not always been welcoming to the, to the stranger in our midst. We have a history that we need to acknowledge. Our involvement in residential schools, our silencing of minority voices, the years of pain and trauma that our two LGBTQI community has gone through. There have been and continue to be many times when our church today has not worked together the way it should. Or when we have placed a higher value on some parts of the body of Christ than others. Yet we are an Easter people. We know that with God, there is always a chance for new beginnings and new relationships. When I think of those new beginnings and relationships, I think of Toronto Urban Native Ministry, TUNM. This ministry began in 1996 when Eileen Anton from Oneida saw a need for places to worship in Toronto that were welcoming to Indigenous people and where Indigenous cultures and traditions could be incorporated into worship. She approached what was then Toronto Conference and the conference agreed to use mission and service money to hire a minister for TUNM. Elder Grafton Anton, Eileen's husband. Over the years, this little church plant grew, eventually becoming an ecumenical ministry shared with the Anglican Diocese of Toronto. TUNM is a good example of what can happen when the whole body of Christ works together and when resources are shared. Now, 26 years after TUNM started, it has three staff and reaches more than 90,000 people each year through culturally appropriate street outreach, harm reduction work, prison ministry, hospital chaplaincy, worship, traditional ceremonies and reconciliation work. This is just one of many examples of the ways in which our mission and service dollars can have a greater impact on our communities than we can ever imagine. Today's reading from Luke tells us that Jesus went to the synagogue in his home community of Nazareth. The writer makes a special point of telling us that Jesus went as was his custom. Jesus was not someone who only attended religious services on high holy days. He was someone who continued throughout his life to participate in the weekly gatherings of the faithful. We are taught by Jesus' example that being a part of the life and work of the congregation is integral to how we are to live. Jesus went into the synagogue and chose a reading from Isaiah that speaks of bringing good news to the poor, releasing the captives and letting the oppressed go free. He begins his reading with the same words that Isaiah spoke. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. This is the same spirit was given to us during Pentecost which means that we have also been anointed to carry out this task. We have a choice as individuals and as a church. We can choose to continue the same way, or we can be open to the possibility that God's spirit continues to blow through the walls of this church, calling us to live our lives and our faith in the best ways possible the ways that will allow all parts of the body of Christ to be lifted up and valued. As followers of Jesus, the one who went all the way to the cross to show us the importance of standing in solidarity 
with the marginalized among us, we live into the promise that God's spirit is upon us, calling us to ensure that the year of Jubilee is not a far off dream, but a daily reality in our bodies, our homes, our communities, and the world. And we also live with the promise that we never do this work alone. Together as parts of Christ's body within this community of faith, and as one community of faith among all that make up the United Church of Canada, we are making a difference. Thanks be to God. Amen.